What, pray tell, kept Emperor Ichijo of Japan awake through those late 10th century nights? Bandits on the road, perhaps? Maybe an uncle plodding behind the throne? Nope, it was the demons. Oni. Shape-changing demonic ogres. Massive and hairy, with terrifying horns and sometimes a third eye in their face. They'd have been around as long as humans, and were responsible for basically every kind of misfortune. Everything from the cataclysmic, earthquakes, plague, war, to the mundane, like swallowing a dude in one gulp. But worst of all, the Oni were dishonest. They changed their shape and used underhanded tools of deception to triumph in battle. So the only way to deal with them was for the Emperor to send his greatest and most pure warrior to cut through their hideous butter of demonic lies with the hot knife of honor, even if it cost that warrior his very soul. Thanks so much to HelloFresh for helping us make legendary meals. Long ago, in the ancient Japanese capital of Heian-kyo, it was not safe for a young maiden to walk the streets, or sit in her house, or do anything really, because they were going missing in the dozens, plucked from the city almost at random, never to be seen again. This tragic affront to his people's safety prompted the emperor to call on his diviner to communicate with spiritual forces and produce an answer to this mystery. That diviner's response? Oni were kidnapping the girls. Specifically, a band of Oni rogues holed up in a fortress on Mount Oye, led by a fearsome king, Shuten Doji. Now, rescuing the girls would require nothing less than the emperor's best. So the call went out to Minamoto no Raiko, a fierce, loyal warrior who had commanded men in battle and cleaned mountains of bandits. In fact, he was as accomplished as one could get without ever having actually faced down a demon. And Raiko wasn't exactly looking forward to that. He found the whole idea of Oni distasteful. Insidious fiends that could take any shape and wear any face? <laughs> Where's the honor in that? He simply couldn't respect it. Oni were terrifying, sure, more powerful than any human, but Raiko's disgust outweighed any fear he might have felt. He accepted the Emperor's mission, though it was never really in any doubt. See, that's honor. Raiko set off on the journey, in the company of his four loyal retainers, warriors all, and an aristocrat of the court. At first, it was like any old mission. By day, they marched, and at night, they camped, swapped stories, and played music. That is, until they met the woman. They found her by the river, out of her mind. She'd been one of the maidens captured and imprisoned into domestic servitude on Mount Oe. She'd escaped, but the others were still there, doing laundry, cooking, cleaning, and getting their limbs torn off and their blood drunk when the Oni tired of them. Fear Shutendoji, she said. Fear the Oni. Taking the woman's warnings to heart, Raiko and his men sought divine protection. They stopped and prayed at four different shrines, and later, totally by coincidence, encountered four mountain priests wandering the road who offered some advice. Yo, don't try a frontal assault on the demon's fortress, bro. Show up at the gate disguised as mountain priests and then ask for shelter. <laughs> because let's be real, everyone loves mountain priests, right? Mm, that's true, Raiko thought. These guys were definitely a fun hang. So fun, in fact, that the priests offered to join Raiko and his band on their adventure just to help out. Ha! Mountain priests can't beat them. So the whole party, half of whom were real mountain priests and the other half just cosplaying them, continued up the mountain towards the fortress. Until suddenly, the voice of Shutendoji boomed over the ramparts, stopping them in their tracks. Who goes there? Wait, oh my god, are those mountain priests? I love those guys! And with that, the demon opened the gates to the men sent to kill him. But when they entered, they noticed that Shutendoji and his bandits appeared nothing like the Oni of horror stories. They just looked like normal guys. Ah, uh, but as Oni, they could so easily change their shape, so that was no real surprise. Though what was surprising, however, was how well Raiko and Shutendoji got along. Turns out this dude was a terrific host, sitting with his guests, plying them with drink, telling them stirring tales of past battles. Ho oh. ho. Raiko was enjoying himself so much, he almost forgot his host was a demon. Though the first reminder came when he and the warriors were offered a mysterious meat that Shutendoji claimed gave supernatural longevity. Now, that was a disturbing prospect for Raiko, who couldn't see any of these missing women anywhere around here. Ah, uh, but it would be rude to refuse one's host. <sighs> to Raiko, definite good manners were more important than potential cannibalism. Down the hatch! <clears throat> and about this time, one of the mountain priests, the real ones, intervened, thinking perhaps that they couldn't just sit around here telling stories and possibly eating people all night. Yo, Sutendoji, he said. 
I heard your name means sake drinking lad. Is that true, bro? Ah, it is indeed, O oh astute and kick-ass mountain priest. Ha <laughs> ha, the demon king replied. Ah, said the priest, producing a mysterious bottle. Then you gotta try my very special brew. Ho oh, oh, ho oh, ho, Suit and Doji couldn't say no to that. After all, he was the sake drinking lad. Mmm, ooh, dang, that's excellent. Easily some of the best, uh, the best sake I've oh, ever had. Mm. It was at this point that Shuten Doji announced that, regretfully, he needed to turn in. He just got super sleepy for some reason all of a sudden. Oh, but the party didn't have to stop on his account, oh no. He would send some dancing girls and musicians to the guest chambers. Then with a bow, he retired. Raiko was impressed. Such perfect etiquette from a demon? Truly, Shuten Doji was more of a gentleman than some actual men he knew. Ah, too bad he'd have to die. When the girls and musicians came, Raiko shooed them off. Surely they were Odi spies. Then, the warriors crept through the fortress to Shuten Doji's bedchamber. The priest's drugged sake had done its work. Shuten Doji was knocked out on the bed, and in his slumber, he dropped his disguise. For the first time, Raiko saw the true face of the enemy. Fifty feet tall, a head full of horns, red skin, as hairy as a bear. Truly a monster. Truly an oni. Quickly, they grabbed the king by his limbs, holding him down as he awoke with a start. Demon! Abductor of women! Feaster of human flesh! Raiko cried, and then he lopped off the oni's head in one slash. But that wasn't the end of it. The decapitated head flew through the air at Raiko's face, still gnashing its demon teeth. Thinking fast, Raiko tossed on not just one helmet, but two, you know, just to be extra safe, and Shuten Doji's head bounced harmlessly off his double-protected face and expired on the floor. The warriors made short work of the oni that remained. They found the missing women, or what was left of them, in a grotesque dungeon, the ground littered with skeletons and severed limbs. Come now, the oni are dead, Raiko said. Let us all go home. And home they went as heroes. Heroes in a story that would be told for generations to come. A story with a clean lesson. That good will always prevail over evil. Ooh, plus you know those four friendly mountain priests. Yeah, turns out they were actually four friendly gods in disguise. So there's another lesson right there, like a double helmet of lessons. Always say your prayers. But rather than that heroic legend being a point of pride for Raiko, all he could ever think about were Shuten Doji's final words to him before he was slain. <laughs> you are not mountain priests! You deceived me! You deceived me. To achieve his victory, Raiko had lied, changed his shape, wore a different face, and won by deception. Oh god, that's what Oni do. And from that day on, when Raiko looked at his own reflection, he would never again be sure of what he saw. But whether you are a hero questioning your honor, a demon king that has to whip up a bunch of food for nine randos that show up at your mountain fortress unannounced, or anything in between, one thing is for sure, HelloFresh has got you covered on that delicious food front. As I've mentioned many times in the past, HelloFresh is my favorite meal kit delivery service that frees up a ton of my time by saving me from stressful meal planning and expensive trips to the grocery store, a place I do not like. Instead, I get all of the fresh ingredients I need to prepare awesome home-cooked meals delivered right to my door. I get to cook, aka an activity that I love that doesn't involve me looking at a screen for once, and then I'm eating in a half hour or less. Plus, with over 40 different recipes and more than 100 tasty add-on options available each week, you are sure to find something that pleases everyone. Say you want to go vegetarian, pescatarian, or fit in wholesome meals. Well, they got you covered on all of that. And actually, in these late days of summer, I was extremely excited to try their Mushu Pork Bowl with cabbage scallions and buttery rice, which was just so fast to cook and delicious as all get out, as you can see on my face. Whereas Jeff this time around, was hyped to serve up their Parmesan chive and chicken potatoes for his family. <laughs> oh, and you know that Zoe and I smelled that from over his fence and had to come over to get a taste. <laughs> Wrong tagline, but right sentiment. Oh, and another thing HelloFresh gets right is their continued work on the sustainability and freshness fronts. Their produce goes from farm to your front door in under a week. The ingredients are all pre-portioned, meaning less food waste. And HelloFresh's carbon footprint is 31% lower than meals made from supermarket ingredients, which we just love to see. So if you'd like to save money on meals and eat just really dang good while you do it, now is the best time to give HelloFresh a try for yourself with this delectable deal. All you gotta do is go to HelloFresh.com and use the code 50 extra credits. That's five zero 
zero extra credits for 50% off plus free shipping. And you didn't mishear me over your growling stomach. You can save a ton of money on delicious meals while supporting the content you love, the environment, and your grumbly tummy. Again, that is 50% off plus free shipping at HelloFresh.com when you use that code 50 extra credits. Your time and taste buds will thank you. And as always, so will we. Thanks so much, everyone. Say, did you ever hear the one about Skylar Holmes, Kuya Koi, Joseph Blame, Dominic Valenciana, Casey Mustia, Arcolite Games, Angela Valenciana, and Ahmad Ziad Turk being fantastic legendary patrons? Because I sure did. <laughs>